All right, here we go. Unit one, section two, absolute value functions. So in the last section, we looked at graphing absolute value functions. In this section, we're going the other way. We're given a graph, we have to write the equation. So starting off, this won't always be given to you, but that is just the general absolute value function form. You have to be able to identify A, H, and K. Plug them into that form, you're done. That's it. Let's start with the vertex. So if you look at the graph off to the right, you can see the highest point here is at 4, 3. So what you just found was H and K. We're almost done. That was easy. The slope or the A value is going to take a little bit of work. So what I would suggest doing is picking two points. So your vertex is always one point and then pick another point on that line. I'm gonna go down here, and before I count this out, count my rise over run, I want to point out the scale of this graph. So this right here is gonna be three, this would be five. So you notice we have an extra box in there. So I just wanna make that obvious so you're not counting out, and it's gonna work out in the end anyway, but so you're not thinking, oh, if I go down two over one, I'm actually going down one over a half. So just be careful with that. So let's count rise over run now. So if I start up here at four, I go down. That would be one, two, according to the scale of my graph. So I went down two to the right. It looks like two, but it's actually only one. So my slope or my A value is going to be two over one or Two. Now, be careful because my absolute value graph opens down, and because I went down to start, that's actually a negative two. Um, the domain for all of the absolute value functions, x is going to be in the real numbers always. The range. So we start up here at what looks like three so how is y going to compare to three well if you look at my graph it's everything below three so we're going to say less than or equal to three or the again the k value connection so finally what is my equation then let's see if we can pick a different color perfect well we're going to start with y equals the a value is negative two and then the absolute value symbol x it looks like h is 4 but it's going to be x minus 4 and then plus 3 my k value and you're done a h and k that's all you need to find x and y will stay there plug in those three values and that's it so here we go second example um, same information so my vertex is at negative 1 3 so that is h and k my A value here, so you got to pick two points, and actually this graph was pretty nice and gave you two points. Okay, so now we're going to count rise over run. So we're going down one, two, three. So we went down three to the right, one, two, three, four. So my A value is going to be negative three over four, rise over run. The domain x is going to be always in the real numbers. The range y is going to be what compared to 3? Well, because my graph here is below 3, I can say that y is less than or equal to 3. So then the last part, just writing the equation, y equals um, my a value is negative 3 over 4 times the absolute value of, if it's x minus h, if I take x minus negative 1, I can just rewrite that as x plus 1, hence the sign change from negative 1 to positive 1, and then plus 3, or k, my h value, or my k value. All right, one more example like this. So write the equation of the graph. My vertex is at 0. Two, so there you found hk, the a value, so pick two points, so your vertex is always one, here's another, so my, I'm going up one, 
rising one, running two. So my A value is one over two. Domain, X is always gonna be in the real numbers. What, well, what values are coming out of this? Well, Y is gonna be what compared to my K value, my two. Well, it looks like I'm going to be above, so I can say greater than or equal to. Last but not least, the equation, plug in A, H, and K. So Y equals one half times the absolute value of X minus zero. That's my H value plus two, or probably a better way and a more preferred way, y equals one half times the absolute value of x plus two. There you go. Uh, a musical group's new single is released, weekly sales S on thousands, <clears throat> increases steadily for a while and then decreases um, as given by the function where t is time in weeks so our goal here is to graph the function and then figure out the maximum number of singles sold in one week so first thing i'm going to do is go ahead and just create an x y axis oh boy and you're probably wondering why am i only using what looks like the first quadrant if we're looking at looking at our four quadrants why am i only using the first one and that's because we're talking about sales and time can either of those go negative the answer would be no so i'm going to stay where everything's going to be positive you can't sell um, a negative number of singles time is never going to go negative at least as far as i know so we're going to stay in that first quadrant so let's go ahead and just get this labeled right away because um, that's going to be important. So down here along the x-axis, we're going to call that weeks. Um, let's see. We can go about every five, two, three, four. So this would be 10 weeks, 20, 30, and 40. Along the other side, we can go... Um, sales and then i'll put a little note down here in parentheses in the thousands so that way that gives me the ability to just go by just write 10 20 30 40 the other way as well so that would be 10,000 20,000 30,000 and 40,000 Okay, and plus, yeah. Okay, so my vertex is going to be given by H, K, which is going to be 20, comma, 40. So 20, 40 puts my vertex way up here. Okay, my slope is technically negative 2. So do the best that you can. Um, you know, I counted, I counted off five, and then I marked 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So what that means is this is actually 2, 4, 6, 8, you know, 12, 14, and so on. You're actually, each line represents 2. So if my slope, my A value here is negative 2, that means I'm going down 1, down 1, or down 2 over 1. So it actually puts me about right there, down 2 over 1. You know, just kind of do the best that you can and then reflect those. And there you have a graph representing the situation. Now, do the domain, we can always plug in any real number, always. The range, the y values are going to be what compared to 40, my k value. If you look at the graph, you can see that they're going to be below, so less than or equal to. So the question is now, what is the maximum number of singles sold? Anytime I ask you maximum or minimum, it always comes from your vertex. So what is the maximum number of singles sold? It looks like we are up there at 40,000. And there you go. Just a quick recap on graphing and then answering a question based off of it. 
just like the last lesson here you have two questions where it is asking you to write the equation of graph make sure you have that done alongside um, the other set of notes as well that's lesson